This is a triangle. But what happens when you cut the top angle in half? Well, that is called an angle bisector. We're going to be exploring what angle bisectors really mean with the angle bisector theorem. So, what is the angle bisector theorem? If a line AB bisects an angle A, then we have that AB over BD equal to AC over CD. And that is what the angle bisector theorem states. And it's extremely powerful when we have a lot of angle bisectors, like in this problem. Okay, in this triangle, we have AB is 6, BC is 7, and CA is 8. AB is 6. BC is 7. And CA is 8. Okay, point D lies on BC, such that AD bisects BAC. So this is an angle bisector right here, AD. So AD is an angle bisector, we know that for sure. But what else does the problem say? The problem also says point E lies on AC and BE bisects ABC. So this is also an angle bisector right here. The bisectors intersect at this point, F. What is the ratio AF to FD? So, we have a ton of angle bisectors here. That's always a sign, use the angle bisector theorem. Or, find an intersector. sometimes, that is also used. Okay, angle bisector theorem, let's do this. What does angle bisector theorem say? It says that 6 over, let's call that whatever that is, X equal to 8 over whatever this is. Let's say y or whatever. So we have that the ratio of the x to y is 6 to 8, right? Because 8 over y equals 6 over x by the angle bisector theorem. So instead of calling it maybe x and, and y, let's just call it something like 3a and 4a, because these two have a ratio of 3 to 4. But we also know that 3a plus 4a is 7, because this is 7. The whole length, cb, is 7. So a equals 1. So this is just 3, bd is 3, and cd is just 4. That's good. So we've already applied angle bisector theorem once, using these, this angle bisector right there. But what about this angle bisector? That also gives us more valuable information about the triangle. Okay, so what does angle bisector theorem tell us? Well, we could use it to find CE and AE a as well, because we know the total length is 8. But that won't really help us much, because we're not trying to find CE or AE. We're trying to find AF and FD. AF, FD. So it's, it almost seems like maybe it's just part of this triangle, kind of, right? Because we're trying to find the ratio AF to FD, not AE to CE. So if we're trying to find the ratio AF to FE, can we also use the angle bisector theorem for that? Well, yes, because we already found this to be 3 using angle bisector theorem. And this is an angle bisector. So we know that by the angle bisector theorem, 6 over AF, or not P, AF, equal to 3 over FD. This over this is equal to this over this. And if we expand this out, we get that 6FD is 3AF. So, keep writing AP. So that means we have 2FD equals AF. So, AF will be 2 times FD. So the ratio is 2. Or if as the choice is said, 2 to 1. So the ratio is 2, the answer is 2. A great application of angle bisector theorem. It all came down to seeing, using the angle bisector theorem, and then noticing the other pair of angle bisector and seeing how we could use that to find AF and FD. And also another remark is you can do this in reverse as well. You can find CE, EA, and then use angle bisector theorem with this angles to find EF, FA. If we're EF to FD, if we're trying to find the ratio of EF to FD.
But because we wanted AF to FD, we wanted to look at this triangle here. And to do that, we needed BD, which we found earlier with the angle bisector theorem. Okay, now let's take a look at another example from the A maze. In triangle ABC, AB equals to 20, BAC is 11, the angle bisector of A intersects BC at a point D, right? So the angle bisector at A, that's called, this is the angle bisector, intersects at D, right there. And point M is a midpoint, so let's draw that there. It's a midpoint right there. And point P is the intersection of BM and AC. So if we extend this line BM all the way there, that's the intersection point P. And we're asked to find the ratio CP to PA. CP to PA? Ah, that seems very crazy, doesn't it? CP, PA. I mean, that, we can't just use angle bisector theorem to find the answer, but we can't we can use it as one, one step of the problem. So first of all, what does angle bisector theorem tell us? Angle bisector theorem tells us that CD over 11, CD over 11 equals to BD over 20, BD over 20. Which means that we, we, we have to also find, that means that CD, if you, if 20 times CD equal to BD times 11. So essentially what that means is that CD, the ratio of CD to BD is 20 over 11. Because CD has to be, if CD let's say is 20, is 20 or CD to BD has to be 11 to 20. So let's say CD is 11A, let's say. Then BD will be 20A because we're trying to find out because the ratio of 20, 20 to 20A is the same as the ratio of 11 to 11A. That's why we just let this be 20A and 11A. But the thing is here is that we're trying to find C, we're trying to find CP and PA. CP is PA. We only know CD, DB. Those are definitely not the same thing. So we have to try to figure out a way to use the other information in the problem. The main thing that we're not able to use here is this midpoint condition. AM equals MD. What does that really mean? I mean, it seems like a midpoint floating in midair. Like this midpoint is not on a side, it's just a random trans, it's a random, on a random angle bisector. And then we extend this line all the way here. I mean, so we've got to do something with this midpoint what we don't know what yet but how because we generally always want to use most of the information if not all of the information in the problem so what have we not used yet the midpoint condition a good strategy to keep in mind how do we use the midpoint condition though the key thing here is that to find a way to use this midpoint condition really midpoint is length so instead of writing this line line let's say that this is x and this is x. So that means that the total distance is 2x, right? Total distance is x plus x equal to 2x. Total distance is 2x. This is x. I mean, it looks like it's two times more, right? It's two times more than am. 80, 80 is two times am. That's a ratio, isn't it? Well, we, do we know anything about ratios? Well, remember we learned Similar triangles last time. Similar triangles involve a lot of ratios. But we don't have any similar triangles here. But we can make one. Yes, indeed. So the trick here is that we're going to make our own similar triangle because the problem doesn't give it to us. Because that's the easiest way to deal with this ratio. And I know this, this is some unintuitive for some people, but we're going to draw this line over here. Why should we draw this line over here? Well, now we have a similar triangle. This triangle is similar to this triangle. The ratio of one to two. Yeah, this triangle has half all the dimensions of the bigger one. But still, now we have a similar triangle. Does that really help us at all? Well, 
we're, we're constructing this line such that this line will be parallel to BP, right? So we can, because we're making this line, we can make it whatever we want. And we're going to make it so that, let's call this DE. We're going to make it so that DE is parallel to BP. Parallel to BP. And why? So that the triangles are similar. Because we don't want to have some other random thing like this, because that's just a random triangle. And we want similar triangles. So by constructing it parallel, then we would have that this angle here would be equal to this angle here. So that, that's why it would, it would be similar. So now it just comes down to using this similarity condition somehow. Well, we know that the ratio is 1 to 2, so if MP, let's call that Y, then DE will be 2Y, right? Because 2 times more. But that's still not enough to solve the problem because we need AP somehow. AP, PE. Oh, another thing we know. Isn't that basically we have that AP equal to PE. AP equals PE. Why? Because, well... It's, they're similar triangles, and so that means AP equals PE because AE is double AP by the similarity triangle ratio. So if AE is double AP and AE is AP plus PE, then we can subtract AP from both sides to get PE equals AP. So these two parts are congruent. So we're, it seems like we're almost done. We're trying to find CP to PA. I mean, CP is just PE plus a little bit extra part. So now it just comes down to finding this extra part, EC. This extra part, that seems also kind of out of the blue, because EC, that doesn't, we can't find EC using our, oh, this pair of similar triangles. Well, you know what's really cool? By drawing that parallel line, we actually have constructed another set of similar triangles. Let's see. Notice how this triangle is similar to this triangle. The blue triangle is similar to the green triangle because DE is parallel to BP. Those two lines are parallel, so the triangles are similar. But the triangles are similar. What is the scale factor? Well, we know that this is 31A. And this is 11a. So the big triangle is 31 over 11 times bigger. So if the big triangle is 31 over 11 times bigger, what is BP? Or for that matter, what is EC? Because that's what we're trying to find after all. Well, notice by similarity triangle ratios, we have TC, PC over EC, right? Those are the, both the small bases of the triangle. PC to EC, that's going to be the similarity factor ratio, which is 31 over 11. So PC to EC is 31 over 11. We can cross multiply 11 PC equals 31 EC. But what is PC? PC is just, PC is nothing but PE plus EC because PC is just PE and EC. So once we write that out, we get 11 PE plus 11 EC equals 31 EC, or 11 PE equals 20 EC. Aha! So now we found EC in terms of PE. So because we have 11 PE is 20 EC. That means that EC is 11 over 20 PE. And remember, we have PE equals AP from above. So this is also 11 over 20 AP. So what is the question asking? CP to PA. CP is CE, or EC, which is 11 over 20 AP plus PE. Right? Because we can break up PC into two parts. And PE is just AP. So plus AP. Divided by PA or AP. So there's the same thing, right? And now this is just 
31 over 20 because we can the numerator becomes 31 over 20 AP and the denominator is just AP. So the answer is just 31 over 20, which because we're asked to find m plus m in the fraction m over n, it's just 31 plus 20 equals 51. A really cool problem. Essentially, the key idea was that we want to try to construct that similar triangle thing, right? Similar triangles, because we have a ratio, and the easiest way to deal with ratios is, well, similar triangles, of course. By drawing this line, we not only constructed one pair of similar triangles, but two pairs of similar triangles. And we also can use this pair of similar triangles over here. So then what we did is we found the ratio CP to PA, but CP is just CE plus EP, and PA is well just PA. And then we know that PE equals PA by the first pair of similar triangles, this one. And we know EC to PE by the second pair of sim similar triangles, this one. And then we combined all of that and solve for the answer. A great use of angle bisector theorem along with similar triangles. Okay, and now you can find all these great practice problems for similar triangles and angle bisector theorem in the free book Mastering AMC 1012. You can download it right below. But now we're going to move on to quadrilaterals. We're talking a lot about triangles, but some problems are more than just triangles. And they have some unique aspects to them, like parallelograms and many other shapes, like this one. You can explore how to solve quadrilateral problems here.